Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I wanted to stop in with a quick product introduction. Now, I know a lot of you are working on Old Masters canvases, and sometimes Old Masters canvases equals tons of colors, which equals what the heck do I do for storage for all these colors? So when a company called Artercraft reached out to me about a week ago and asked if I would show this product on the channel, I said, yeah, I actually will. I don't show actually very many products in comparison to the number of emails that I get, but when I find something that I think is really useful to you guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna show it to you. So like I said, today's product is from Artercraft on Amazon. The reason I said yes to this is because it has 84 storage containers. <laughs> now, this came, I must say, in a very sturdy looking outer plastic container with some dividers in it. This comes with, like I said, 84 of these small Tic Tac containers. These are all quite small, but if you have a very confetti heavy canvas, sometimes you don't have a ton of each color. This also comes at a price point that I thought was gonna be affordable for a lot of people. So that's also a thing I like to share when I can. Now, the wonderful folks at Artercraft did tell me that they're only carrying this product until it's sold out this time. So I'll put the link in the description below if you wanna run over and snag it. This comes with two sheets of 64 labels for your storage containers. It also comes with comes with some goodies, let's see. Two white boats. These are my favorite white boats, actually. They're kind of thicker white boats. And then some baggies, some spare baggies for your stash. It comes with three diamond painting pens with squishies, a nine placer, a six placer, and a three placer. I usually actually just harvest the tips off these and then use them for my thick diamond painting pens. Then it came with a spare nine placer, six placer, and three placer, okay? And those are the wider placers. I know some of you like the narrow and some like the wide, but it comes with the wide. And then this is a diamond painting pen that lights up at the end. How cute is that? That's very adorable. So, like I said, if you're kidding up a lot of colors and you need an affordable set of storage containers, this might be an option for you. I'll stick the link in the description. I have not tried this with any canvas yet, so I can't speak to the durability of the tops or any of that, but if you're looking for a quick and inexpensive solution for a lot of colors, this might be a product that you wanna check out. Thanks so much, Artercraft, for sending that for review. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. Diamond Painting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, stopping in to share week five of our Summer with the Masters series. I can't believe we're five weeks into this already. It has been so much fun. It's going by so fast, I can't even believe it. If you guys are veteran viewers, welcome back. If you're new viewers, welcome. My name is Jessica. I'm an insane diamond painter. And if you're insane about crafts, you're totally welcome and you're totally in the right place. Today's canvas is In the Forest of Arden by John Collier from A Homespun Hobby. I have made it about this far from the top so far on my Summer with the Masters canvas. My daughters are graduating in a week, so things have been a little crazy at our house, but I have managed to get a little diamond painting in almost every day. So I'm hoping I can get through at least maybe part of two of my three customs for the event. If you have missed some of the Summer with the Masters videos, never fear. Katie and I have each put together a playlist on our channels that I will link on the screen right now so you can find the rest of the videos. So far in the series, we've covered how to find art, where to find art, how to order customs, where you can find prepackaged Old Masters kits if customs just aren't for you. And if you're new, I do think watching all the videos in order might be somewhat helpful to you. So be sure to check the playlist out. Today we're gonna be talking about something I've really been looking forward to, and that is 
lesser known artists whose art should not be lesser known. And I hope you'll enjoy exploring even more art and artists with me. Now I have to say, you guys are killing me with the quality and the creativity and the variety of the pieces that you're choosing for this event. I have had so much positive feedback about the series, letting me know how much you've learned, but truly, when I look over at Instagram at the canvases you've selected, I'm learning as well. I'm seeing things that I never would have thought to diamond paint, and I'm so grateful for that. So if you want some crowdsourced inspiration, make sure you're checking out that hashtag Summer with the Masters over on Instagram. You will not be sorry. You'll find some art that you will love. I guarantee it. There's just so much over there. So let's all collectively shout it from the roof tops, you guys. There is so much art out there available for us in this genre of the old masters. We do not have to buy canvases with stolen artwork because in the U.S. at least, the entire world of art created before 1926 is free and open and available to us to diamond paint. If you're a company, that artwork is free and open and available to you commercially. How cool is that? <laughs> There's so much beautiful stuff there. Now, if you've made it this far and you're still not sure what we're up to here today, this video is part of an ongoing series that's running from May 1st to June 19th here and on Diamonds and Washi, focused on pre-1926 public domain artwork. So like I said, I am grateful to be working on this series with the amazing Katie over at Diamonds and Washi. I strongly encourage you to go over and check out Katie's channel you guys both for the videos in the series and also just for great content because Katie is an A plus content creator and a very nice person. If you want to get involved in the audience participation portion of Summer with the Masters, just sign up on the Google Doc I'll link below with a photo of an old master's canvas you started working on on or after May 1st. The canvas just has to feature artwork created by any artist from anywhere before 1926. Sign up by the date of our wrap-up video on August 14th. You'll be eligible for a grand prize drawing and our viewer gallery celebration. So. I just wanna make it clear that although we do have some great vendors that we're partnering with for the event that are listed in the description below, your canvas can come from absolutely any seller as long as that art qualifies. Let's get into some art that I would like to feature by lesser known artists. Now I'm gonna put lesser known in quotes because these artists certainly aren't lesser known by everyone. Many of you will be familiar with at least some of them and they certainly weren't lesser known by their patrons of the past, obviously, but when I say lesser known, I'm really referring in this context to artists outside the European masters that all of us in Western culture think of immediately when we hear old masters like Van Gogh, Monet, Manet, Rembrandt. The artists that I'm gonna to feature today in many cases fell prey to the male, heterodominated, Eurocentric slant that pervaded the art world of the past continues to pervade art and the classical music world today. In some cases, these artists are well known outside the US, but for a variety of reasons might be less well known where I live. All the artists I'm about to show you have very valuable perspectives and voices that deserve to be celebrated alongside the stereotypical pieces that come immediately to mind when we hear the phrase old masters. All of these artists and many more from around the world are old masters. Now, of course, I can't feature all the lesser known masters out there, but here are a few that I want to feature today. The first is Evelyn de Morgan. Born Mary Evelyn Pickering in the UK, de Morgan lived from 1855 to 1919. She was one of the first women to enroll in the Slade School of Art and began using her middle name of Evelyn rather than her birth name of Mary, since Evelyn was at that time a more gender neutral name and she wanted her work to be judged on merit rather than for her gender. I love de Morgan because she defied gender roles of the day. Some of my favorite expressive selections are Flora, Hope in a Prison of Despair, Earthbound, and Night and Sleep. I think some of these would be incredible for diamond painting, and I really love this artist. 
The second lesser known master that I'd like to feature is Edward Mitchell Bannister. Bannister lived from 1926 to 1901. He was a Canadian by birth, but moved to Boston by about 1850 with a desire to become an artist. Because of the racial prejudice of the day, he was unable to find a mentor who would take him on as an apprentice. So he worked a variety of odd jobs, including as a barber for the very successful business owner, Madame Christiana Carteau, who was an astonishingly accomplished woman in her own right. The two later married, and through hard work and study, Bannister began to find success as an artist in New England, later sitting on the board of the Rhode Island School of Design, which is still to this day one of the most prestigious art institutions in the United States. I absolutely adore this piece called Oak Trees. I think it's so pastoral and beautiful. And another piece that I think would be fabulous for diamond painting is this one called The Farm Landing. I adore the colorful boats in this piece. The third artist I'd like to feature today was actually suggested by a viewer, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. I love it when you guys bring amazing artists to my attention and send me artwork. I adore that. This artist's name is Juan Luna. He lived from 1857 to 1899. He was Filipino by birth and is still today one of the most celebrated Filipino artists of all time. Along with being an incredibly gifted artist specializing in the romantic style and in realist paintings, Luna was also a political activist who played an influential part in the Philippine Revolution in the late 1800s. Unfortunately, Luna met a tragic end that I won't discuss here and lived to be just 42 years old, but I think you'll agree when you see my favorite selections that his art is full of action and beauty. Some of my favorites are Las Damas Romanas or The Roman Maidens, and The Death of Cleopatra, both of which are filled with action and expression. The next artist in my list of lesser known artists is perhaps one of my favorite, although they're kind of all my favorite. This painter is named Raja Ravi Varma. He was born in 1848 in India, and he is one of the greatest painters in the long and very beautiful history of Indian art. Varma often depicted Hindu deities and figures from Indian epic poetry and stories. He distributed his work widely in the form of prints and lithographs, which made his work really accessible to common people. Though somewhat controversial in his home country today, there's no doubt that Varma remains an extremely influential Indian artist. Some of my favorite selections are Portrait of a Young Woman in Russet and Crimson Sari, Princess Damayanthi talking with Royal Swan about Nala, and Shakuntala pretending to remove a thorn from her foot. These are beautiful pieces. I adore them. Next in my list is Ferdinand Nab. Ferdinand Nab was a German artist who lived from 1834 to 1902. Very little is known about Nab beyond that he trained as an architect originally, then turned to architectural painting. His landscapes are absolutely magical because of his almost mystical use of light, which transform what could be a boring landscape scene into something really memorable and theatrical. Some of my favorite pieces are At Sunset, The Grille du Chateau, The Castle Portal, and At the Castle Gate. Today's fabulous Summer with the Masters giveaway is a diamond painting toolkit brought to you by several amazing vendors. The first is from Sanner Direct, this adorable, cute teddy bear diamond painting drill vacuum. Then we have this beautiful mint green silk tray with pink plugs from JH Envision Lab. JH Envision Lab did offer a discount code for everyone else watching, so be sure to check the description below if you would like your own 3D printed beautiful diamond painting tray. This giveaway will also include two custom scents, Sunflower Medley and Soul of the Rose, created by my fabulous friend Robin at Paddywax, just in celebration of Summer with the Masters. 
Those two scents are available in our shop now for everyone else as well. And Robin was also kind enough to contribute a Mona Lisa cover minder. So all of these fabulous products are going to Helen Clemens. Congratulations, Helen. Helen says, hello from Wisconsin. The two paintings that I'm seriously considering are The Visitor by Arthur Hopkins and The Shrine by John William Waterhouse. Of the paintings that you shared, Godspeed would be my choice as a companion to the accolade that I ordered a couple of weeks ago. Those would all be fabulous selections, Helen. Congratulations on winning this Diamond Painters Toolkit prize pack coming to you from me very soon. I will reach out to you in the comments below my original announcement video, so check there for further instructions. Next in my list of lesser known artists is Robert S. Duncanson. Duncanson lived from 1821 to 1872 here in the US. Duncanson was a biracial American painter and he really achieved international acclaim during his lifetime. He was actually referred to by the press of the time as the best landscape painter in the West. Although he's best known for his landscapes, Duncanson's work also included portraits, still lifes, and murals. Duncanson is really a true American treasure, and many of his works are housed in the Smithsonian American Art Museum today. Some of my favorite beautiful selections are Landscape with Rainbow, and landscape with sheep. Again, these are beautiful pastoral landscape scenes that use light beautifully. The next artist I wanna to feature today is Kamal Omolk. He lived from 1848 to 1940. Omolk was born Mohammed Ghaffari in Iran into a family full of artists. Both his father and uncle are also well-known Iranian artists. During his schooling, Ghaffari began to attract public attention for his art, and he was invited to the court of the Shah, actually, where he created many of his best-known paintings and was given the moniker Kamal ul Mulk by the Shah. Now, when I was looking at ul Mulk's work, I wasn't positive that it was gonna translate into diamond painting very well, but I actually test rendered a couple of selections, and I was surprised at how beautiful his very architectural style looks given a canvas with enough dimension to it. So my favorite selections are the Mirror Hall and Sultanatabad. Next in rotation is Sophie Jeanjambre Anderson. She lived from 1823 to 1903. She was a French-born British artist specializing in stylized portraits of women and children, particularly in kind of rural settings. So during a period of time when female artists were not taken seriously at all, Sophie was able to establish herself as a painter and was the first female artist to sell a painting for public collection. My favorite fact about Sophie is that she was largely self-taught and only studied briefly with an art teacher. It was very difficult to choose my favorite selections from this artist, but some of them are Take the Fair Face of Woman and Gently Suspending with Butterflies, Flowers, and Jewels Attending, Thus Your Fairy is Made of Beautiful Things, aka the longest title for a piece of art ever created. And then her very famous piece, no walk today, which is so adorable and expressive. Now the giveaway prize for our next video is perhaps one that I am more excited about than any other prize for the whole series. So our next prize is going to be a diamond painting pen from our friends Matt and Steph at Lazy River Wood Turning. Now, if you don't follow Lazy River Wood Turning over on Instagram, leave this video immediately, go over there, follow Matt, because these are some of the nicest custom diamond painting pens that I have ever used, and I mean ever. All of his pens are unique and a little different, so it's truly an awesome experience snagging one of these. They are hard to grab because Matt's really super popular, so make sure you follow on Instagram so you know exactly when the drops are happening, all kinds of other fun stuff, but you guys. Early in our event, Katie and I reached out to Matt and Steph at Lazy River and said, hey, would you be willing to create 
some diamond painting pens based on old masters works of art. And Matt, even though he's super busy, <laughs> kindly said yes to that request. I am thrilled with what he has done. You guys, not only did he turn these pens, he hand poured the resin for these pens. Yes, he did. So today's giveaway pen is going to be something similar to the pen I'm showing you here today. This is a pen that Matt created based on John Collier's Famous painting, Lady Godiva. It's one of my customs for my, our Summer with the Masters series. The pen you will be receiving is gonna use the same blank, but it's gonna be turned a little bit differently because all of Matt's pens are unique and individual. Isn't this absolutely beautiful? It uses pink, burgundy, and gold all swirled together. I cannot believe the artistry that Matt has taken on when doing these pens. Now. The crazy thing, you guys, is that he did not just do a pen for Lady Godiva. He did several others that are going to be available to you in a variety of ways for purchase. So again, make sure you go follow him over on Instagram so you know exactly what's going on. He created one for the Night Cafe by Van Gogh using beautiful shades of red and greens and yellows. It is stunning. He created a custom blank for the Child's Bath by Cassatt. It's swirled with orange, purple, and white based on the figure's dress in that painting. It is gorgeous. Then he also made one for the Artist Garden at Giverney by Monet, and it uses shades of purple and green, and it is stunning. Matt, I hope this is something you'll continue doing because you guys, sometimes you find an artisan that is just truly an artist. And in this case, Matt is definitely an, definitely an artist. So again, the prize will be a Lady Godiva pen similar to mine coming straight from Lazy River Wood Turning. What I need you to do is comment below before June 9th with colors that you would choose for a custom diamond painting pen. This is going to be open to both US and international viewers. I cannot wait to send one of you a beautiful pen like this from Lazy River Wood Turning. Best of luck, fingers crossed for you. We're getting down to the bitter end of my list of lesser known artists and I really wish I could go on all day because I love art so much, but Katsushika Hokusai is maybe one of the best known Japanese artists of all time. Best known for his woodblock print, The Great Wave off Kanagawa. Hokusai was a master of many media, particularly printmaking and painting. Now, of course, The Great Wave is a very famous piece, but Hokusai deserves to be known for his many masterpieces beyond this one. Perhaps his best known works are those that focus on Japanese landscapes, and iconography. Some of my favorite selections beyond the Great Wave off Kanagawa are Phoenix and Dragon. Last but not least on my list of lesser known artists is Rachel Reich. She was a Dutch Golden Age painter who lived from 1664 to 1750. The daughter of a professor of anatomy and botany, Reich achieved international fame during her life as a painter of beautiful flowers. The painting career of this mother of 10 children, yes, I said 10 children, <laughs> spanned more than 60 years, and Reich is still known today as one of art history's greatest still life painters. Some of my favorite pieces are Flowers in a Glass Vase with Cricket in a Niche, and Still Life with Flowers on a Marble Slab. Reich's florals are beyond beautiful, and if you love still life genre, she is definitely one to check out. Now, as with my last list of artists, I do have a couple of honorable mentions for you. First is The Banjo Lesson by Henry Osawa Tanner. This piece is called The Falling Star by Witold Pruskowski. I also adore O oh Swallow Swallow and St. Cecilia by John Strudwick. 
And last but not least, A Storm in the Rocky Mountains by Albert Bierstadt. Now, why didn't I feature your favorite lesser known artist? Because I didn't have time. So if you can think of someone you wish I had mentioned, please be sure to put them in the comments below so that we can all explore this fabulous genre of lesser known masters who should not be lesser known. I would love to see so many of these artists and many others rise to the same level of fame as some of our European quote unquote masters. I think they're very, very worthy of doing so, and I think the more that we can bring them into the public awareness, the better. I hope you guys have really, really enjoyed today's video and exploring some more art with me. I would love to hear what your favorite selection was from the art that I featured today. And like I said, if I didn't feature your favorite, pop it in the comments, because I want to know about it too. I hope your week is absolutely marvelous. Of course, if you have questions that I can answer, pop those in the comments below. I always try to acknowledge every comment. The only time I don't is when YouTube hides them from me. And that does on occasion happen and they appear a year later and I don't know why. But if there's a question I can answer, I'm more than happy to do so. Of course, make sure you leave your comments in the description for this fabulous, fabulous Lady Godiva giveaway pen from Lazy River Wood Turning. I am beyond excited about this, you guys, and I cannot believe the artistry and the creativity that went into this project on the part of Matt and Stephanie over at Lazy River. So huge thanks to them. Huge thanks to you for hanging in for quite a long video today. <laughs> Be sure to check out Katie over at Diamonds and Washi so you don't miss next weekend's drop. And of course, as always, Spread some joy wherever you are, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.